On this day in history, 1959, Hawaii became the 50th state of the USA. Hawaii is a great place to live if you hate being eligible for contests. Live from Wattpad Nation, it's the Corner Booth. Thank you for joining us on our 23rd episode. Wow, you know, after this next episode, you could waste an entire day watching us. Um, or not waste, not waste. Learn from us for an entire day. Um, I want to personally welcome two guest panelists. Yes, we have two this week. One is Dr. Victoria James, who goes by at J. Victor on Wattpad. And um, it's really a pleasure to have you, Vic. Um, I think that you guys are going to be you know, wildly impressed as I have been this, you know, like the past half hour. She's very well spoken, which is awesome. And over in Lindsay's corner, we have a shared screen. This is Frances Ramos, and um, she's a Watt patter. She has the T-shirt to prove it. I saw the profile picture. Um, <laughs> but they are actually roommates in uh, at ISU, and uh, which is the uh, uh, Iowa State University for Sorry. anybody who doesn't know. Yeah, the Cyclones. Go Cyclones! Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. What's your, what's your school's, uh, like, everybody has... For, for example, I went to the University of Houston, and we did this. Go Cougs! What do, what do you guys do? We just say go Cyclones. Yeah. Really? You don't have, like, a hand gesture or anything? I mean, how do you make a Cyclone with your hand? I don't know. Turn around really fast. Everybody understands what it is. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, interpretive dance for the yep. cyclone. Yeah, yeah, I like it a lot. Awesome. Well, um, we do have an incredible episode for you. At least we're going to try to make it incredible. It's episode 23, Wait, What? And it's all about ambiguity in writing and um, how mystery is a wonderful component of storytelling. However, there are times when the ambiguity... Become uh, becomes more of a turnoff for readers. So, is there a middle ground between juicy plot and absolute confusion? We're going to talk all about it today. But before we do that, like I said, every single uh, <laughs> every single panelist here, uh, Mr. Thomas Bonick and Miss Lindsay Lippincott alike, they will uh, show you why they're on the panel because they're just awesome. You know, we have a good time. So, this first part of the broadcast is called the High Five. And it's just, uh, if you, you know, this is your first time watching one of these broadcasts, this is kind of our fun little introductions. I think they're fun, but, you know, it's just because I write this stuff and they actually have to do the work, which is awesome. So, this part of the high five, I gave it a little subtitle. It's called, Tell Me What You Want, What You Really, Really Want. This week, they're um, going to share a personal ad, not for romance, but for readers. So if they were given a few column inches, what would they say to gain readership? And I asked them to be creative and, of course, have fun with it. And I am actually going to start with Miss Lindsay Lippincott. What's your personal <laughs> ad? All right. So I have uh, wanted lovers of magic with a taste of adventure, people who enjoy curling up with a good story and can't wait to get the next bit of info. Not for the faint of heart. Caution may take you on a roller coaster of emotions. Ooh, that's awesome! Yeah, well, I was gonna say something else. It was, it was something. I'll just say, I'll just put it this way: Lindsay pulled out a lanyard before the broadcast. <laughs> I thought it was something else. Uh, if you want to know more about it, you can tweet Lindsay. You can tweet all of these uh, panelists at any time during the broadcast, or use our hashtag. TCB watch to ask us questions or even hop over to your right part of your screen if you're watching this live and go over to the live feed. Uh, yes, Jody Petrella, I've had way too much caffeine today. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I just completed a 90 hour work week, so I am fueled up on Mountain Dew and positive vibes. Um, so, anyways, <laughs> back to our high five situation. Mr. Thomas Bonick, what do you got for your personal ad? Oh, my personal ad. Okay, so. I'm going to start with this little line. Um, if, you, if you go to our car, car dealership, right, you'll never see a base model car on the floor. They're going to sell their most prestigious car. So I, I said this to say I'm going to promote what I have going on right now. I have this project going on called 5QI. So my ad would be my latest project is hashtag 5QI. Please stop by and say hello. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> if you haven't checked out 5QI, it's pretty awesome. He's uh, rounded up all of these Watt patterns and uh, 
They, he asks them five questions, and they give him five answers. Sometimes there's a little bonus question in there. Um, Thomas, I hope that you got my, my five answers. He asked me to do it. I don't know why, but uh, he asked me to do it, so I'm more than happy to. You'll be um, sure. I'm sorry? You'll be up in a few days. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is fine. Don't worry. Take your time. It's not, like, uh, anything spectacular. Like anything that Miss Victoria James has written before. Miss, uh... Vic, what do you got for your personal ad? <laughs> London girl. Good sense of humor. Wants to risk you into a world where anything is possible for a price. Dashing rebels and dastardly aristocrats preferred. Survival skills useful. Magic may ensue. Whoa. Okay, <laughs> so... Uh... <laughs> Can you tell I'm I've like, never written a pastel ad in my life? No, no, not at all. Um, uh, if, if you're in London, Victoria, she's probably on Tinder. Check her out. I don't know. <laughs> I yes. am not on Tinder. <laughs> Come on, Vic. I'd swipe right for you. I'd swipe right for you. Miss Grace Ramos. Guys. Okay. Um, Crazy writer looking for a reader interested in discovering the fantasy world behind each page must be willing to face all sorts of magic magical creatures, fall in love with the characters, and under and understand the complicated bad guys. <laughs> Wait, a minute. The, the complicated fat guys? No, bad, bad, bad guys. guys. Oh, I was just like, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> too, I guess. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. they could be a little bit of both. I don't know. <laughs> we have trouble with obesity in this country as it is. <laughs> So now we're going over to my favorite part of the broadcast. It's called Creamer Sugar. And why is it my favorite part of the broadcast? It's because it gives us an opportunity to put you, Wattpad Nation, in the spotlight. So during the week, these panelists, they think about who has moved them, whether they're someone who has been at the top for a really, really long time, and uh, we just want to show them some love, or if they're the cream that's risen to the surface and just knocked their socks off. So... Uh, I'm going to start in the same order. Miss Lindsay Lippicott, who do you have for cream or sugar? Um, mine is, I'm just going to shout out, um, I know that he's gotten a shout out before, uh, for, it's T.E.J. Johnson, um, and he got a, the shout out for Contandar, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I'm actually shouting it out for his second uh, in the series that he started recently, which is The Return, I believe, that's what it is. Um, so yeah, it's a really amazing series, super awesome guy great writer, and you should definitely check him out on Wattpad. Awesome. Thank you. Mr. Thomas Bonick. Okay, so I want to give a shout-out to two people. Um, one would be um, P.D. Anil and um, Futurism 0360. Um, P.D. Anil has um, 24 um, public work, and um, one of his pieces is titled um, Here the Crimson River Runs. The second one is Alone We Stand. Um, the second person is Futurism 0360, um, book number one, 575, five, and the second book would be Coffee and Cookies. These guys are extremely supportive um, in the Wi-Fi community, and I really strongly support people to go, go out and um, also support them. Absolutely. Thank you, Thomas. I'm is Victoria James. Wow. Um, well, I am uh, currently absolutely thrilled that my uh, one of my very favorite authors on Wattpad has a sequel uh, coming up at the moment. Um, the only downside is that I'm not sure that the first book is still available, um, but uh, the author's a, a fellow Londoner, um, so we're obviously a talented bunch over here, um, and uh, it's a chap called Kurono Shio. Um, and his first book was The Loyalty Tests, which um, if you've ever seen Battle Royale, um, it's, uh, it's basically a bunch of uh, sort of bad Japanese kids killing each other um, in a really grisly way. And it is a fantastically written book, absolutely brilliantly written. Um, and uh, that's available now, I think, on Amazon, but uh, he's finally started publishing book two, thank God. Um, I've been desperately waiting for it, and it's called Fail Deadly, and um, it's absolutely brilliant. The world just gets bigger and badder and meaner um, and, uh, and even more psychologically twisted. Uh, so that is absolutely fantastic. That is Fail Deadly uh, by Kuro no Shio. 
Um, and the thing I love about Wattpad is that, you know, every week you come across new stories by new authors. So, you know, sure, of course, we have our favorites, and sometimes those authors become our friends, and sometimes those stories become our bookmarks. But, you know, every single week something comes into my timeline, and I think, wow, I'd, I'd love to check that one out. So something that came across my radar um, just last week, um, and I've just got to check the, the name because uh, still a, a new acquaintance here, but um, Pyrography, uh, that's P-Y-R-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y, sounds much cooler than anything they ever taught me in school, and it's called Oakwood Grange, and Oakwood Grange is really cool, I'm about five chapters in, and it's a genre that I think they call, or what I would call it, um, Weird West, so it is, um, it's kind of an American frontier story, um, but not quite like any American frontier story you have ever read before. Um, so go check that one out, um, a, a, a relatively new uh, Wattpad user and a book that is still going up. So uh, that's my hot new recommendation. I love it. Thank you so much, Vic. That's awesome. Um, I also like your taste in movies. Uh, you dropped Battle Royale, um, which is uh, it's a cult classic, but if you haven't seen it, it's kind of like, uh, imagine... It's great! Loads of people die! <laughs> yeah, 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 it's pretty... Uh, it's it's definitely like uh, Hunger Games-esque if Quentin Tarantino directed it, and yeah, it's crazy brutal. Miss Frances Ramos, what do you have for us? Okay, um, I read this story, it's called, uh, oh, this series, I actually read the three books um, by uh, J.M. Wilde. Uh, it's called As They Rise, the Eva series. Um, it's basically, I was noticing that in the comments they were talking about zombies. Well, this story is about zombies. Um, Eva and her friends uh, are in the midst of a zombie apocalypse, and they have to survive, so they're trying to get to safe places, but they find that nowhere is actually safe. People, sometimes they have to fear the living more than they have to fear the dead. But uh, it's all a moment of self-discovery for the character. The world is scary. It's thrilling. I cried. I, I never cry in books, but I cried, and I, I was simply amazed by the, the writing style and the, the humanity in, in the characters themselves. It's, it was just breathtaking. I would read it again, definitely, and I suggest it to anybody. Absolutely. Uh, well, I, not, not only is, um, you know, reading something again uh, uh, an amazing compliment to ever receive, but once you suggest it to other people. And hopefully, you know, everybody watching, you're seeing that. If uh, you've had a shout out in the past and you're watching this broadcast, whether it's live or you're watching the recorded, um, I hope you, you realize that, I mean, you move us so uh, with your writing. So keep up the good work and thank you so much for being who you are and doing what you do. Which brings us over to the entree. And uh, like I said, the episode is entitled Wait What? And uh, we're going to kind of dig into this. We have uh, three questions, and, you know, I mean, there might be a few curveballs here or there. If you have any questions yourself, if you're uh, participating with us live, which right now we have a whopping 13 live viewers, which is awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in live. If you have a question at any time, do not hesitate to ask us. We'd love to answer them live. That being said, also, if you have a question during the week, if you're watching this as a recording, Please use our hashtag on Twitter or use the comment section down below. And uh, we would love to answer these questions and field them in any single way that we can. If you want to direct them to a panelist, you're more than welcome to. Uh, not necessarily, that's a, it's not necessarily a requirement, but um, if it's just a basic question, I'll just throw it out to the panel and who see, not necessarily who wants to take it. I'll assign it to somebody. It's always a, a fun time. But getting back to this episode, the entree of this week. Every writer is inspired by another who has the ability to craft an amazing story. How does your favorite writer keep you turning the pages? How do you incorporate their methodology with yours? Miss Lindsay Lippincott. All right. Well, first, I need to give a shout-out to Atomic Nikki on, WAP, or on Twitter for um, sharing with our hashtag, keep calm and zig -a -zig -ah for our... Ah, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Why am I not saying this? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Did you okay. use the hashtag? Yep. Yep. Oh, man. The hashtag. oh no, I see it. That's awesome. <laughs> all, all, right. Right, all right. Okay, so to my entree, um, 
I have writers keep me reading when they present me with something that has more to it. Um, so they give you a little taste of something that happened or something that will happen and let you know that it's not the last that you'll hear about it. And uh, it, just, it makes me keep wanting to read on. Um, so they don't give you everything up front. And I try to do that with my own writing. Uh, it takes practice sometimes to just decide what needs to be said and what shouldn't be yet. Um, and then I try to keep myself from giving everything, but I try to give enough that it will actually hook the reader to make them want to keep going on. Awesome. And I'm going to scoot on over to Mr. Thomas Bonnick. That's me? Oh. Yes. You know, um, I believe yeah, I you, you figured it out as Thomas Bonnick. I don't know. <laughs> from everything that I read, everyone that I read. Um, the thing is, surprisingly, I, I mainly read nonfiction stuff. I read a lot about, um, about wars, about history, about, about countries, about people. Um, it, it's, it's difficult to kind of rip those apart. But um, usually those are the things I read about. I'm presently reading this story. It's called um, a Projection. Um, the subhead is Encounter with My Runaway Mother. And it's written by, by Priscilla Opal. You guys can check it out. It's, um, it's, it's just lovely details. It's, it's very, very colorful. And once you start turning the page, you just can't stop. I, but I think a wide variety of, um, of, of writers. I, I tend not to be very critical of what I, what I read, um, because I read such a wide spectrum of everything, right? And I find that um, whether you're a newcomer or you're, you're Stephen King, Everyone has their own style. So I really do take away from everything that I read, and I try to incorporate some into whatever I write. Awesome. Thank you so much. Dr. Victoria James. Gosh, um, I love cliffhangers, um, and but, but they come in all sorts of shapes and forms, don't they? I mean, you know, there are some cliffhangers that literally just last a chapter and you turn the page and that's it um, and you've got your answer but uh, but ah oh, gee you're on page one of a new chapter so you've just got to keep on going and then of course that one ends on a cliffhanger so you've <laughs> just got to turn the next page and you know that's that's the kind of the sort of the, the, the chapter by chapter um, uh, sort of cliffhangers and that's done um, incredibly well by a uh, wonderful author called Michelle Parver who's written a, a sort of a, a seven part series um, called Wolf Brother um, which is a sort of Ooh, set in the Neolithic it. times uh, with a, a Stone Age boy um, and his companion Wolf and wow Michelle just I mean you know every single chapter ends with you know a noise or somebody bursts in or you know something crackles outside in the Neolithic darkness and you're like ah and you've just got to keep on reading. Um, <laughs> and, for seven uh, books? Yeah literally for seven books this woman keeps it up for seven books. I mean, That's it's, like it's, literary it's, crystal meth. It is really good to have read that. But you know what? There's a lot of spooky things out there in the darkness, in the Neolithic dark. You know, it's 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 really quite um it's quite amazing. And I have to say, on on Wattpad, my uh, my dear friend Sarah Benson does that brilliantly with um with uh, with her uh, couple of Bloodstone Prophecy is is the one she's uh, she's War got Shadow series. now. The Shadow War series. Shadow is the first one, and she is just like wow. The, those chapter. You know, the Cliffy Queen, we all call her, uh, those of us in the Wattpad class of 2014 call her the Cliffy Queen because, you know, they're just amazing. Um, I, I've never managed to make my books do that. Um, and, and so I, I sort of go for kind of the, the, the long game cliffhanger, um, which is, uh, well, you know, my, my favorite version of that is... Uh, who's dead by the end of the book. Um, I think that's always quite an effective one. Um, people sort of assume that your lead characters are going to make it through, but, um, you know, bless dear old George R. R. Martin, who's taken that one off the table. So, um, you know, having somebody as a protagonist um, or as one of your leads or as your antagonist is uh, is no guarantee that they're going to make it through to the end. Um, if not a book one, then then certainly a book. Uh, for me, Slave Days is a is a trilogy, um, and I get uh, I do get messages from people saying, "Please don't kill Luke. Please don't kill Cillian." Well, I you know I would love to be able to uh, offer reassurance, but uh, but yeah, <laughs> not going to. <laughs> well, you know you might you can say that you don't. Um... I don't know, you don't manage to use the, sh the short game cliffhangers, but you do manage to win this thing called a Wadi Award for last year for Slave Days. Um, so a very uh, be a very belated congratulations for that. Um, Thank you. But was that, 
I don't know. Was that an experience that you kind of walked away from with just a complete different mentality than you went into it? Because I know a lot of people, when they enter something like the Wadis, especially if it's their first time doing it, they don't realize the, the process that goes along with it as well. Um, was it surprising to you at all when it won? Um, when you submitted it, were you a little shaky on it? No, I mean the the, the kind of the, the choice I'd made with with Slave Days, and in a way it comes back to to what we were just saying there about sort of chapter endings, um, and th I, I'm really intrigued by the way people post stuff to Wattpad, and there seems to be kind of two schools of thought, and the one school of thought is, um, you know, accepts that most of us we're reading it on our phone, we're reading it in you know sort of five minutes, ten minutes here and there. Um, so you're going to make it something that people can read kind of comfortably and enjoyably and quickly um, and thus even though actually maybe if it were a printed book um, you know your chapter might be say 3,000 words people put up just you know kind of 800 or 1,000 words at a time on Wattpad to, just to make it more digestible for people and, and you know those books um, kind of do really well and, and, and also obviously because you have more chapters you, you get a higher kind of read count so but with Slave Days I was always very conscious of the fact that I wanted it to feel like a book I didn't want it to feel like you're reading it on your phone I wanted it to be a, a good kind of chunk I wanted to say to readers you know please don't read this in 10 minutes between class you know please uh, kind of just just don't read it while you're on the bus to, to work or to school um, you know, sit down with it. Make yourself a cup of tea. Pour yourself a drink. Tim Johnson used to uh, used to text me and say, uh, "Pour myself a drink and sitting down with the latest chapter." Um, and, and I used to worry that that you know actually because people often don't have you know 30 minutes to devote to a chapter that that maybe um, you know kind of slave days wasn't finding its way to people. Um, but uh, you know, luckily that 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 seems to have been unfounded because I, I think what people were doing is they were they were reading it and and they were telling other people about it. Um, so and that was actually the the, the Wattie that I won. It was a great category called Talk of the Town, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and and that you know if if there's anything a, a, a writer loves, it's the idea that their book is not only being read and enjoyed but being talked about and shared. You know, that was pretty much. A dream. Um, so uh, yeah, to win that particular one um, meant, meant an enormous amount to me, um, and uh, and it's also been very interesting to the the publishing professionals, you know, to the agents, to the editors who have looked at Slave Days since then. You know that the fact that this is a a book which has kind of word of mouth, it's it's got buzz, people read it and they share it, and that is you know that's that's absolute kind of gold from a, a kind of a, a, a professional publishing point of view. Um, so uh, so that thrilled me from the, the top of my head down to my little toes. Um, it really <laughs> did. It really did. Absolutely. <laughs> and everybody who hasn't entered awesome. what is yet this year, do it, do it. It's uh, it's just the best thing, you know. Don't 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 expect it to happen and if it does happen and you win, you too will be thrilled down to your toes. I promise. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. I, we're going to actually hear more from Victoria James about the publishing experience because Slave Days has been picked up, what, by a publishing house. And um, she's actually coming to the States in, uh, in just a short time. She's going to be visiting somebody who you know if you've been watching enough of these broadcasts. Her name's Brittany Charmantine. <laughs> and... Uh, they're just gonna, you know, uh, I don't know, do Sex in the City of uh, New York. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just post a lot of pictures. Whatever you do, post a lot of pictures. Uh, Miss Ramos, what do you have for us? Okay. Well, um, for me, Patricia Briggs. I don't know if anybody knows her, but she's my favorite author. Um, I have been following her work for years, and every time, I, every time she publishes a new book, I'm right there to get it. You know. Um, I think that what makes me come back to read more of her work is the detail that she puts into the body language of the characters. Um, for example, uh, one of in her most well-known books are the Mercy Thompson series and the Alpha and Omega series, where the char the main characters are werewolves or werewolves or shifters. Um, so to deliver that sense that the characters aren't really all that human, she reinforces all the right behaviors. Say like subordinate characters don't look at their leaders in the eyes for too much, or they bear, or they bear their teeth at them, or stuff like that. Um, another thing that I like about her work is that, especially in the Mercy Thompson series, is that 
uh, she uses myths and legends to basically build her story around it. Mercy Thompson, she is a coyote shifter. She is the daughter of the of, of, of all coyote, which is part of the Native American uh, mythology. And he was a trickster, and he was always getting in trouble, and so she is always getting in trouble. She is always uh, somehow, you're pulling on this, <laughs> somehow, like, uh, reliving his stories, and that truly builds that mystical sense in, in, the, in the world that she lives in. Um, so it's safe to say that that involves a lot of, a, a lot of uh, research. I myself have read some of the uh, original myths, and, well, they, they relate a lot to what she's writing, so she's obviously had to do some research. Uh, for a story that I've been working on, uh, the, story, the characters are traveling a lot, so that means that they are learning about the places, their history, their people. And, well, if I don't do the research, uh, I would only be doing a mediocre job. And if I'm not happy with it, I'm not going to expect anybody else to be happy with it uh, either. So, I don't know, writing requires research. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> research and more research, and then when more you get research. sick of that, do some more. Absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, Vic, she, she dropped a, a name earlier, uh, Sarah Benson. She does a ton of research. Uh, not only is she fascinated and, and write it rather well, Egypt, but I know she has to do some heavy, heavy research. And that's what makes her books the, the way that they are. I mean, there's that dimension of reality. Even though it goes into crazy quadrants of fantasy, it is uh, spectacular what she can do with hey, these are the facts, and I'm going to make them entertaining for you. So, yes, absolutely. Let's go over to question number two. Balance is crucial in storytelling. There are main points, and there are details. How do you choose what to keep and what to omit? Lindsay. Um, I think it just all goes down to the reader understanding what's going on. Um, so you want to be able to build the world and give the reader enough information so uh, they know what's going on. Um, hang on a second. Francis distracted me. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Trouble. Okay. <laughs> so you want to make sure that they grasp what you're trying to say and what's going on, um, and you, but you don't want to overload them. Uh, they don't need to know every single little detail about the world that you're creating as long as you know it and you follow the rules. Uh, you should be golden. Um, so you make sure that you uh, that what you write follows your rules um, and not everything needs to be force-fed. Uh, so you want your world to seem effortless, more like walking through water. You don't want to make your reader feel like they're walking through jello. <laughs> mm. But that sounds so delicious. <laughs> Just eat your way through. <laughs> exactly. I would just walk through with my mouth open. Mr. Bonnick. Yeah, I, I agree with what Lindsay said. Um, but I'll expand what, on the that. jello part? I agree with it too. <laughs> yeah, um, you have to stick to the main points, right? But um, the detail will vary based on who you're writing for. Um, like, like, for example, if I'm writing a story about Jamaica, and if I'm writing that story for Jamaica, Canada, there's a lot of stuff that I can write and I can suggest, and you'll just catch, catch on to what I'm trying to get across because it's in Jamaica, right? But if I'm writing for North America here, there's a lot of details that I have to put in my story for you to, to understand what I'm talking about, you know? Another quick example is, like, for example, let's say a kid's story. You know, you can, you can have a suggestion where there's a bed, there's a touch, there's a wink, then there's a guy sleeping, and then there's a lady reading a book, then you, you, you instantly get the whole story. You know what's going on, right? If you're writing for adults, you can just go for everything that you know see nowadays in prime time, right? So it really depends on um, who your audience is, um, and um, that's going to help determine what details to add and um, what to omit. That, that is my take on that, that question. Awesome. Thank you, Thomas. Vic, what do you got for us? Well, you know, the one thing I would say is it's incredibly hard to judge when you're writing yourself. Um, and this is one of the things that I found Wattpad just uh, invaluable for. Um, this whole question of, you know, sort of have I given away too much? Have I given away not enough? Um, and it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a good case of, <laughs> um, you know, sort of dropping clues and knowing that some people will pick them up and some people just, just sort of won't um, uh, until you sort of get to the end. I mean, 
um, Slave Days has a has a sort of a, a, a twist, if you like, um, a sort of right at the end, uh, just a chapter in from the end. And uh, and I love that. There's there's two sort of particular points where I just love reading. Um, Reader comments. One is 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 something pretty shocking that you see at the end of chapter five, um, and then the other one is is this sort of this revelation at, at at the end. A couple of revelations actually, and uh, and it's really really interesting because there are some people who are like, yeah, I had that one clocked. Chapter twelve, I knew that one was coming. Um, and then there's some people who just go like, O M G W T F, no, <laughs> and it's like, you know, I'm, and I'm winning. And I think as long as you get that that sort of mix of of, of people sort of going like, knew it, and people saying, ah, um, then um, then then you know you you kind of you've got the balance right. I mean, it the problem is is that as a writer, you you hold all the cards. Right. So you know, um, you know, you know, you know uh, what's going to happen. You know if if, if that particular plot is going to succeed or fail. Um, you know the true identity of that particular character. Um, you know, uh, you know, sort of the the, the unexpected event that is going to kind of just sort of blow up in everybody's face. Um, you know it, um, and and you can't unknow that. So you can't put yourself back in the position of of, of the reader reading it for the first time. Um, so, so all I can sort of say in Wattpad, and I've and I've not, I've not made any changes on the basis of uh, reader response, but I have kind of thought, you know, phew, really glad to, <laughs> really glad to have had that bit of feedback. Um, and when I was uh, sort of, you know, kind of working out the the beginning of book two. Um, uh, and again, I was I was sort of working it over, and and somebody said to me, look, you know, there's 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 the the, the trail of breadcrumbs, and you want to lay a layer trail of breadcrumbs uh, for the reader. Um, but right now, it's like you're just sort of you know feeding the ducks. You know, you're just chucking that bread out there, um, when actually you need to be laying it in a little trail if you want people to follow it. So um, so that's a little tip to all of you: um, don't feed the ducks, um, lay the bread trail. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just do something extreme, like uh, I mean, you you dropped George R. R. Martin earlier. Who I mean, if mm. you haven't heard of this guy, I'm sorry. Uh, he writes a book called Game of Thrones. It's wildly popular. <laughs> and they, not he, well, that. like I say that, okay. And, and some people mm. they honestly they don't they don't think about the fact that oh, oh Game of Thrones it's on television, you know, and <laughs> they don't you know realize that it that it has source material, and which is you know that's unfortunate. But um, Game of Thrones, it's, I, I don't know, it's kind of like my life. It, I, I, there's a lot of <laughs> drinking, and I have no idea what's going on. So it's, um, it's definitely one of those things that they, it pitches just completely wild. And I think that's why everybody has gravitated toward it. And even though the series has gotten way, way away from you know, what, what's on the page, um, it's still entertaining. And I think that... Half of it is making sure, at least for Wattpad, half of it is seeing firsthand and rather quickly if you are entertaining your audience with all of these either breadcrumbs like you're talking about or just um, the spectacular things that nobody had ever thought of doing in the first place. Um, I'm going to scoot on over to uh, Miss Francis. What do you have? Okay, um, my short, simple, I guess. If it has no effect on the plot or the character's development, then it has no purpose in the story. As simple as that. I mean, so, say some sometimes they put a lot of emphasis, say, on a knife. This is a story that I'm I'm reading. Forgot the title. It's called The Vision. Um, and there's a lot of focus on this knife, and you're all the time wondering what the knife is about. Well, the knife is the killer's tool. Is their is their obsession? Um, and that is important to put emphasis on that knife because it represents the character's, I don't know, obsession with cutting up people, which is horrible. Um, but Sounds so it, pleasant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really good story. I've read yeah, it in yeah. like three it's days. It's something you would read your children, you know? <laughs> and, it's, and it's an old book, but you don't, it, it's like from 1977, and you don't even realize that. That it is ooh, from ooh, that don't, time. 1977 is old. You're gonna offend some people. Because <laughs> oh, like, oh man! I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay. We all can't be young and it's, in college. And... <laughs> Living wildlife. No. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, but you know, it's it's that detail to to something that is important. Not say a 
door handle that I'm not going to hear about later on in the book. I'm going to focus. write a story all about a door handle. And I, I'm going to make you guess what exactly is what is that door handle. door handle better be important. It's going to be, I, 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 the whole thing is just going to be, you know, hey, I got you, Francis. <laughs> it's Chekhov's gun, right? I mean, have we all heard of Chekhov's gun? Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I've, I've heard, heard of, of Chekhov, it. that's for sure. Uh, yeah. what, can you, you know, expand it, on it? it? It it because here we are like it, it it's right at the beginning of 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 the seagull. Um, a character walks in holding a gun, and then the gun gets put up on. I can't remember if the character walks in with it or if it, if somebody points out the fact that there's a gun, there's a gun on the wall, and from that moment on, you're just waiting for something to happen with that gun. <laughs> um, you know, and and sure enough, uh, there it is, Act Five, bang, somebody uh. It, <laughs> Somebody gets the gun. I mean, there, there's a really interesting uh, bit of research, um, I think, which said that actually knowing the ending, so this is kind of relevant to what we're saying here about how much do you want to give away um, and, you know, sort of how much should you spell things out. Um, but I'm, I'm, there's this amazing piece of research um, that, that sort of said that actually knowing the ending of a book increases your enjoyment of it. You would think it would be the opposite, but actually if you're reading a book and somehow you know the ending, so for me, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, um, somehow, I can't remember how, I found out who the prince was um, sort of be before the end. In fact, it, actually, I think before I even began it, but it, it, that didn't spoil my pleasure in the book because the pleasure is the journey you go on to arrive at that piece of information. Um, so, so I also think that that you know, if ever anybody sort of gives you feedback on your work and says, you know, wow, well that was really obvious, or you know, kind of I saw that one coming, um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes people can find it very satisfying to read through to a conclusion that they are expecting, um, as long as that the journey itself is not obvious. Um, so I think that's uh, I think that's. Uh, that's another little thing to throw in there. Oh, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more with you. It's kind of the same way that a magician performs a trick. You know that something is going to happen, whether, like, for example, he's going to make something disappear. He tells you at the very beginning he's going to make you exactly. something disappear. But it's the whole journey that you're taking with him uh, all the way through the steps to the prestige, and you want, you're invested, and you kind of suspend everything else in your brain and everything, just for a moment, revolves around this guy is going to do something incredible. So if you can kind of superimpose that on writing technique, I think you're pretty golden. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? Um, question number three. How would you handle someone who just can't grasp your work? How would you guide someone who doesn't have a grasp on story structure? Miss um, Lindsay. Um, all right. <clears throat> Uh, so, if someone asked me questions about my work because they couldn't grasp something, um, I would ask them what they're having problems with. Uh, maybe it's something that I overlooked. Uh, it happens sometimes when writers know their own world. Sometimes they think something should be obvious, but to a reader, it's not. Um, so in that case, I would see if there's something that I could do to make it clear in the story itself. Um, if it's something else, I would try to help the reader understand in whatever way that I could. Um, so sometimes people just don't understand things and that's okay. Uh, not every work is for every person. Um, so as for guiding someone who doesn't have a grasp on storytelling, I would look more at the basic structure uh, which involves your story arc. So basically like, uh, depending on what level they're at, like maybe even go down to the basics of how you start and how you progress through. Um, and then go into how to make the world come to life more for the reader. Uh, so a lot of times you run into the show, or you get the show don't tell, um, and then leaving bits uh, of the rules for your world. Um, other than that, it just takes practice to make perfect. Oh, was that was that the end of the sentence? I'm sorry. I, yeah. I thought you were going to say something else. No. Um, no, I, I think that, you know, the more, definitely, the more that you do it, the better you're going to be at it. Yeah. Um, I forgot whose past assault it was, but they were talking about how um, you can do this over and over. Like, they were using a quote. 
and mm -hmm. you could do this over and over and for many hours and you're still never going to be an expert at it. And um, there's something awesome and terrible about that at the same time. But I think that, you know, definitely, uh, especially what, you know, Vic was saying about giving something away at the very beginning and then working your way backwards through it, that's a fairly advanced kind of writing technique. And how do you get there? You start simple and then you go big um, versus, yeah. you know, hey, here's the whole enchilada and I'm going to try to take it. Uh, very rarely does that ever pan out well for anybody. Mr. Vonick, what do you got for us? Yeah, um, you know, I, I want to start by sharing um, a quote that um, Joe Cottonwood shared on my thing there recently. It, it relates very well to question number two, what people are doing. I meant to share it a while, but I didn't. It says, um, try to leave out the parts that people will skip. It's as simple as that. So that's in regards to what to keep and what not to keep. Try to leave, try to leave out the part that people, people will skip. Now, in, in regards to the question you just asked, um, people can't grasp my work. Well, listen, um, that's why we have different genres, right? People are going to read what they want to read. Um, if, if you don't like my story, if you don't like what I'm writing, or if you don't understand what I'm writing, and you ask me a question, I'm more than willing to try to explain, right? But like we explained before, not everyone's going to get your story. It depends on what your story is about also, right? Sometimes it's current affair related. Sometimes these people are not even within your circle. So they'll never get that story. So um, I'm willing to share and answer any question in regards to my story, but some people just will not get the story. So that's not just that, right? In regards to guiding someone, well, Wattpad is a perfect platform for that. You know, I've seen stories written in so many formats, so many different ways. It's just like movies, just like songs. You're gonna like some, you're gonna hate some. I think um, who am I to guide you as to how to write, right? You know what? I'm I'm a designer. I've been a professional designer for many many years, and I watch my daughter. She's a um, she goes on the computer and she makes designs. But who am I to say she's not a designer you know, because she didn't go to university? I see writers as the same. You know, uh, again, I I did this thing where I asked people questions, and a common question I asked was, why do you write? And that was a common question throughout my survey that I'm doing here. And um, the reasons are so different, so varied. And then um, these are people from so many different levels. But they're all writing. They're all writing. They're all telling their stories. And they're all getting reads. These stories could be books. You know, Fifty Shades of Grey. I heard I didn't read it. I think it, I think it's in my house on the shelf. I didn't purchase it myself. <laughs> but I heard that it's... <laughs> It's not a well-written he reads story. It, he reads it in the closet, like, uh, late at night. And, um, yeah, I heard yeah, it's not yeah. a but I mean, it only copies it itself. So um, I'm not about to guide anyone as to how to write their stories. You can research it online, and you can go your own way. You know, whatever works for you, well, that's what you do. Exactly. Whatever works. And it's going to work differently for every single person, that's for sure. Vic, what do you got for us? You know, I'm not sure I've got anything particularly constructive here because um, if there's one thing that, that you know, sort of a, a lifetime of reading has taught me, it is that story structure can be absolutely anything. Um, I mean, for me, my storytelling reflects the, the, the way I write, which is I begin at the beginning and then there's a middle and then there's an end. Um, and I can't imagine ever being able to, to, to write something differently. Maybe one day I, I, I will just for the heck of it, but, but for me that's how I like to write. But in terms of how I like to read, um, so something I love to do every year is uh, is it's run by the, the, the Guardian newspaper here in England and it's called Not the Booker. Um, and it is a it's a sort of slightly cheeky counterpoint to the the, the Booker Prize, which is um, the Britain's sort of major annual literary prize. Um, caused a bit of a scandal a couple of years ago when it was sort of opened up to Americans who had uh, up till then uh, sort of been kept out. It was for, for for British and Commonwealth writers. Now it's for everyone writing in English. Um, but the, the, the Not the Booker Prize uh, basically accepts nominations from the public and as a result you get this sort of incredibly eclectic list every year and what's particularly wonderful about it is that um, 
small presses are, it, it doesn't take indie authors just yet uh, in terms of sort of like pure self-published authors, but it, it really well represents um, smaller presses and as a result you can find yourself reading stuff that feels a lot more experimental than um, perhaps, you know, sort of mainstream storytelling. And I was just sort of reading a book this weekend that that jumps about in time, it withholds who is narrating a particular bit, um, it uh, it has blog posts and you don't know who's written the blog posts, um, it, it's just downright confusing and yet it's fabulous, um, you know, it, it, it really kept me reading um, because, uh, you know, sort of layered uh, among this kind of this, this complicated structure was a, a fabulous story about, um, you know, a fractured family, a missing sister, um, you know, a, a double life. One of the characters um, is, uh, is is working as a, a an escort, a prostitute, um, and this this sort of structure. I mean, I'm sure the author herself must have kind of worked it out absolutely meticulously. And I think you know, sort of as a writer, you just have to trust that if it makes sense to you, then by the end of the book it will make sense to your reader. Um, as a reader you may be thinking, oh god, I hope this makes sense by the time uh, I finish it. Um, and I think as long as your reader understands you by the time they've turned the last page, then you've done alright. Um, you know, you've structured your story coherently, comprehensively and uh, and you've told your story in the way you want and, and, and I think as long as you have done that, as long as you have brought the reader with you to that point of understanding by the end of the book doesn't really matter kind of you know sort of what rules you've broken along the way um, the only thing you you've just got to be wary of is not being so confusing um, that uh, that the reader just sort of disengages and and gives up so in the case of the story I was reading this weekend uh, it's called uh, called Fishnet um, by a woman called Kristen Innes and uh, the characters were just so compelling um, that it, it sort of, I didn't mind the fact that uh, for quite a bit of the time I didn't really have a clue what was going on or, or who was talking um, because the, the, the inner life of the characters was so compelling. Um, so, you know, you can be smart, you can be clever, you can rip up the rule book, just don't shortchange your reader by uh, the end of, 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 of the very last page. That's happened to me before. I read a 500 page novel um, that made no sense and I kept on hoping that, that, that I was so convinced because it was so brilliantly written. Um, it, was, it was the Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Murakami. So if there are any other victims of this book out there then you know get in touch because I feel like I need a support group. I read this book about 15 <laughs> years ago um, and I still feel totally cheated even down to the last paragraph. I was like how's he going to do it? How's he going to pull this out of the bag? How's he going to tie it all together? I know he's going to tie it all together because it's it's so brilliantly written. And anyway, he never tied it together. And uh, boy, I I was uh, yeah yeah. I still haven't got over that. Um, so don't do that to your reader. It's not kind. Uh, my name is Victoria James, and I have been wronged by an author, and I need to talk about it with you people. <laughs> Any fellow sufferers out there, get in touch. The Wind Up Bird Chronicles. Oh, man. I mean, you what have I a brilliant mean? platform for this. You all can, you know, uh, start a Google Hangout and just, you know, eat you know, stale cookies and drink coffee and uh, I don't know. Whatever they do in those support things. I probably should see one of those eventually. Miss Francis, what do you got? Okay. Um, so back home uh, in Puerto Rico, we have uh, a saying. It says, uh, No hay preguntas tontas, sino tontos que no preguntan. It means... Yeah, I don't know what you should say, but <laughs> yeah, it sounded yeah. awesome. I know. It sounds awesome. I know. Stuff so into English, it sounds horrible. But this one sounds good. It's, it means uh, there are no stupid questions, only stupid people who don't ask questions. Um, and what I mean to say with that is, like, seriously, if you have a, a, a problem, you don't understand a book, you should just ask questions. Ask the, the, the writer. That's what we're here in Wattpad for. Just PM people, email if you have to, and leave comments because other people might have that that same question, you know. And it's easier for the writer to just answer it once, you know, have, be done with it. Um, and you know, anything goes. Just ask it because you have a question. Um, sure. Something that also goes with that is if you have a question, you can look through the comments to see if somebody else has already asked it. Yeah. Because sometimes. <laughs> 
you do get stories where the same question is asked multiple times. <laughs> you just end up like having to put it in the actual chapter. If you have this question, here's the reason. Here's the explanation. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's still good that people that people in that situation would actually ask you repeatedly. That means that you know they have a doubt, and that that leaves you room to you know improve in answering that for them uh, in the story later on or in that same chapter or such. Um, now, if anybody, uh, for people who don't know, don't quite uh, know how to start or organize their story, I would say you need, they need to start with, well, an idea, uh, a pretty solid idea, I would say. Uh, it's, it's simple. It's that simple. And then you, ask, you have to ask yourself, who is the story about? What kind of person or creature they are? Uh, what are their goals in life? Their fears, their passions. You know, try to make them as human as possible. Um, what's the problem that they face and how they face it? Because jumping the hoop is also knowing how to jump it, because uh, that can either make or break a character. You can end up changing the character's uh, personality completely. Say they were good, they turned bad because the way they solved their problem was in not necessarily the correct, the correct, the most correct way. Um, they may have other options, and they chose the wrong one. Um, also, I would suggest that writing bullet points. I don't know. I don't know if this, this this has been said before, but I like to write bullet points. And so, like every event that I kind of expect to happen, and I say expect because, as we all know, as when we're writing, it it, it all could change. It could Instead of going to, I don't know, a volcano in Hawaii, we might go to Greenland. I don't know. You know, it might happen. I think there are volcanoes there too, right? I don't know. Sure. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But the thing is... You could write one there. Like, it, it but, might not be there, but you could write it. It could be there. Yeah, we should just go. <laughs> or you could do that oh, research yeah. thing that you were talking about earlier. You know? I do it constantly. You, know? you got no idea. I look up maps. I look up roads. I look up train systems. I mean, like hotels, hotel prices, cars. Can you access a place with the with road or a train or a taxi? Everything, okay? Everything you can think of while you're traveling, you have to, you have to make your character think about it because in that, in that, say, universe you've created, they are people. They are living a life in their own terms. You know, you have to comply or I mean, not comply. You know, you have to live up to that. They have to live up to that, I guess. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Well, that's great. Uh, it's it's hard to believe that you and Vic um, have never done a broadcast before because you guys are just crushing it this episode. Yeah. Um, Vic, I, I've you have a question from, um, it was Lucy Rhodes. She was asking about the book you were talking about. I think you said it was by Murakami, uh, the title of it. That's right, yes. It's called The Wind-Up Bird Chronicle. Now, don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> she wants to read it so she can be depressed along with you. you know? it, it, right. it is it is absolutely brilliant. You know, this is this is just the kind of the heartrending thing about it because what I was saying earlier about how if the writing is good enough, if the characters are good enough, um, you will take the reader with you. Um, it, you know, sort of even if they're not entirely sure where you're taking them and it's often actually a, a, a real pleasure to go on a kind of a mystery journey with a, a, a brilliant talented writer um, but but in this case yep yep that very last page uh, you know you will be left uh, <laughs> bereft <laughs> so don't say I didn't warn you but it is a brilliant read. There needs to be a sticker on that just you know a cautionary label. Caution! We're, yeah absolutely. Uh, we're going responsibly. Over Pass the salt, which is the portion of the broadcast where we deliver you an honest observation, opinion, quote, or factoid in 140 characters or less. Um, if you like them, please share them on Twitter. I am going to, like I said, start in the same order with Miss Lindsay and work my order around. All right. Um, mine's pretty short. I have know the story you want to tell, then work to present it well. Ooh. A little bit of uh, some in there. Like it. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Mr. Thomas. Okay, so I made a write short story. So one mine is going to relate to short stories. It says, uh, a short story is a different thing altogether. A short story is like a kiss in the dark from a stranger. That's by Stephen King. 
Hmm. That's not mine, but it's a good one. No, A Kiss in the Dark by a stranger? Like, I, I mean, that's kind of cool. I don't know what club you're hanging out in. I mean, that's pretty awesome, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, Thomas, yeah, are you sure you haven't read that Fifty Shades stuff? <laughs> Victoria, what do you got? Uh, mine's a, a quote that I heard at a, a wonderful event at Foyles, um, Foyles Bookshop in Charing Cross Road in London um, during the, uh, the London Writers' Fair um, in 2014. And I've never forgotten it because uh, I took that advice to heart uh, just a few months later. And uh, it's this, quote, Give yourself permission to take your writing seriously, unquote. And uh, it was said by a lovely lady called Antonia Honeywell, who was there promoting her debut novel uh, called The Ship. And uh, she's a lady of about my age uh, with uh, one big difference. She's got four small children. Um, and, uh, and, and what she was effectively saying was... Um, Treat it seriously, you know, treat it like a job. If one day you expect people to pay good money to, to read what you write, um, and even if you're not at that stage yet, but you're expecting people to, uh, you know, spend their precious minutes and hours and days reading your work, um, you need to take it seriously too. And for me, uh, what that sort of inspired me to do was basically to say, look, you know, my day job is important, but my writing is also an equally important. And I'm going to respect that, and I'm going to give myself permission to take my writing seriously. So whenever friends say to you, oh, it's just a hobby, um, or whenever people say, oh, are you still doing that? Or whenever you get a dinner invitation, um, but you know that your Wattpad readers will be expecting a chapter from you the next day, um, actually give yourself permission to take your writing seriously and to, to put that first, you know. Don't go out, skip the party. Um, you know, don't spend your evenings watching TV or, or sort of worrying about work. Um, get up an hour earlier before work and write. You know, give yourself permission to take your writing seriously, and you never know uh, where that might lead you. Absolutely. And Vic actually has an incredible story to go with that. We only have about three minutes left in this broadcast. But Vic, seriously, uh, you and Francis, please come back. Um, I, you have a wealth of knowledge, the, the, the two of you, but um, in particular, Vic, I, I would love to hear more about the, just the publishing process and stuff like that. And Maybe we can devote an entire episode in Season 2 about that. Um, if you don't know the schedule, the way that it's going to work, we have two more episodes left in Season 1, and then we jump over after a two-week break, and we will start Season 2, and we're super excited about that. And no, Miss Francis Ramos, I did not forget your past assault. What do you have for good, us? Good, good, good. Um, so I have... They say write about what you know, and if you don't know it, Google it. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I've said a lot of crazy stuff after, okay, Google. I, I, I mean, <laughs> that's just crazy stuff. That's Google, if it's possible for somebody to drown without being submerged, um, just really ridiculous stuff. I don't know. I, I, I should really go into that. Anyway, yeah, I promise I'm not a serial killer. It's something that I do like a really bad job of hiding. Um, we are down to the wire. Two minutes left. Did it give us enough time to kind of wrap up this project broadcast? First of all, we hit 300 subscribers on our channel, so thank you so so much, Wattpad Nation, for subscribing, for leaving us comments, participating in the live chat like you all have been doing. Everything that uh, we have wanted since the beginning as far as reaching the community, it's all, it's all happening, and it's all thanks to you. So keep it coming. We're going to, I mean, if you're enjoying these things, we're definitely going to bring them back. Um, and it feels like I'm being interrogated by the police. It's just the way that the, the sunlight's coming in the window now. Um, <laughs> I'll try to fix it next week. We'll see what happens. Um, and I also <laughs> want to mention not only the Wadis, but it's also tied next month, the month of September, to the Just Ride It program. So for 30 days in September, you can take the pledge, 10,000 words in 30 days, and they are going to set aside a Wadi Award specifically for the Just Ride It program. So if you're into that, uh, let me know. Send me a, a little message because um, for anybody that's participating in the Just Write It um, portion, um, I got a little surprise for you. So uh, let me know. You can either it. tweet at me. Uh, yeah, Lindsay's doing it too. So <laughs> all the cool kids are going to be there. Come on, what are you talking about? Um, so 
like I said, tweet at us using our hashtag, leave us a comment in the comment section, or whatever you have to do to let us know what you're doing for your Just Write It project. We would love to hear about it. We just hit 7.30, people. 15 live viewers right now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we, we hope you had a great night, and, um, you know, same time next week, same great channel. Panel, if you please say good night. Good night. Bye, guys. Good night. Bye. <laughs>